In recent weeks, police officers across the country have tear gassed crowds in attempts to disperse anti government protesters. Tear gas is a chemical weapon banned in war, but is legal in Kenya for law enforcement purposes. Experts, however, warn that there should be controlled use of it, raising concerns about the effects the substance could have on young children, as well as implications of long term exposure for the population. Plumes of smoke from exploding tear gas canisters drifted across residential settlements in the capital, Nairobi. In a small shanty in Kibera lay a four-month-old bubbly baby, Precious Mungina. As police hurled tear gas canisters to control the protesting crowds, one got into the house where baby Precious lay through a gap in the iron sheet roof. Baby Precious died soon after being exposed to the agents of tear gas. Lung experts say children are uniquely vulnerable to physiological effects of chemical agents. A child's smaller lung size compared to adults magnifies the harm of agents such as tear gas. You wouldn't want to use this uh, agent indoors, especially now, for example, for a child. If that child was left there unattended, then it's almost next to impossible for this child not to uh, be exposed to the lethal consequences of these uh, agents. So what exactly is tear gas? Tear gas is also known as CS gas or chlorobenzylidin malonitrile is a chemical agent that causes eye, nose and throat irritation and inflammation. For us in the medical term we call it a lacrimator agent. So basically these are agents that will make you usually teary. Um, they are generally used to disperse of crowds uh, either by security or security uh, farms. When the tear gas is lobbed and the particles are dispersed in the air, then they usually tend to irritate what you call your mucous membranes. Okay, so your eyes will generally be because exposed to the environment will tend to be affected. Two, your nose, your throat, and your mouth. Okay, and if you get a significant amount of inhalation, then also your lungs may actually get involved, not forgetting your skin. Tear gas exposure can have a variety of effects depending on the duration and intensity of the exposure, as well as the individual's age, health, and underlying medical conditions, children being the most vulnerable. In Nairobi's Madari slum, a mother took to the streets to plead to police officers to stop hurling the tear gas canisters at their homes. <laughs> When tear gas is thrown into an indoor setting, the exposure could be potentially lethal. Sometimes it may actually cause what you call thermal burns to your throat. And if it's a, if, since you're indoors, you're going to inhale quite a significant amount of that. So it will irritate your airways. You may feel the chest will tighten. Uh, you may actually get what we call bronchospasms in medical terms, but the actual time is wheeze. You actually start to wheeze and start feeling like you can't breathe. You start to suffocate. It can also cause a respiratory failure or exacerbate a pre-existing respiratory condition. For adults, especially the ones who already have pre-existing conditions, so for example, you're asthmatic, okay, or you have another condition called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, then this can actually trigger an asthma exacerbation or a, what you call a COPD exacerbation or an attack for, for, for uh, lay people, and this can actually be fatal again. Medics say chronic exposure to these agents can cause eye problems such as glaucoma and cataracts. Use of tear gas is supposed to be controlled because we know that, uh, the consequences of using this in residential areas and the police officers are properly trained. On
on these conditions and how tear gas is supposed to be used. So we don't allow, it's not allowed. While the availability of tear gas can mean police avoid having to resort to the use of more harmful weapons, in practice, police forces use tear gas in ways that it was never intended to be used, often in large quantities against largely peaceful protesters or by firing projectiles directly at people. Then we need accountability. What I've seen, this is not happening. All officers are given firearms. They carry life bullets. All officers are given uh, uh, tear gas canisters. And they are just howling, uh, lobbing these tear gas canisters without orders. And this is why we are having that situation whereby a child uh, died from uh, tear gas uh, uh, smoke in the house. It's not supposed to be like that. All this is controlled. And we have somebody who should take responsibility. The recent happenings raise questions about lack of regulations of appropriate use. We need to have leadership in the police. We need to have command in the police. And from my observation of what happened in the last few days, it's that we lacked command. And this is exactly why the police went to an extreme. The use of tear gas is controlled. Not every other person is allowed to throw that, to load that tear gas against the crowd. The commander identifies particular officers. This is a situation whereby the platoon commander will be able to account for each and every tear, tear gas cancer that has been used. However, use of other tactics such as firing a water cannon with semi-permanent colored dye into the air to disperse a crowd has been found not to endanger lives. The Papur Lane Lillian is nothing but just water. Normally those uh, water cannons are equipped with water. So that purple color is just a coloration of the water. And why is it, uh, was it used? Because uh, we will want to identify the people that were in that crowd during that, uh, 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 that, 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 that demonstration. The itchiness comes from the, the moment you get to water in your body, then it reacts to the tear gas. Security experts advise that cartridges with chemical irritants must never be fired directly at any person or household. Wow.